See, most of my ideas are old, and uh, they, you've got to move with the times or you're not there. Yeah, I'm Robert Chambers. Um, my wife and I, Donna, operate a property south of Cobar, about 60 k's. Uh, it's it's 27,000 hectares. Uh, we predominantly run uh, Dorpa sheep here as a meat job. Uh, and we also do a bit of opportunity cropping, mainly feed cropping, like feed cereals, uh, oats and barley that type of thing. We've got a tractor here that we do our sowing with and because of the marginal country here and marginal cropping area, we, we try to reduce inputs um, and we've converted this machine to put the exhaust gas in the ground through the air seeder to reduce fertiliser inputs. Well, we've been running for two years now um, and anecdotally we, we believe it's working quite well. We did some early trials with it against DAP, 50 kilos of DAP. Uh, certainly wasn't as good as 50 kilos of DAP but it was way better than nothing. So as far as growing just food for our stock and, and that type of thing, it's, it's, um, uh, we think it's going to be a winner. A mate of mine by the name of Chris Higgins sent me a pamphlet on it. <laughs> and then I, uh, in, I uh, had a look at the internet, good old uh, Google, and I became interested in it. And I uh, uh, went, to a, went and saw one fitted on a machine, and I decided that I'd probably be able to build it myself and, and have a go at it, experiment with it. It's, it's just putting exhaust gas in the ground. The whole concept of it is, to, is you've got to get your exhaust gas cool. So you, you need it at ambient temperature. That makes the carbon monoxide, which is the bulk of the exhaust gas, uh, more stable. And so all you do is, is, is you've got to build a big radiator, cool it down, and, you, and, and, you, and you're trying to cool temperatures, you know, in, in vicinity of 300 degrees C to hypothetically, you know, the 22s or 25s, whatever the, whatever the ambient temperature of the day is. Um, and you put it through your air seeder and you put it through your existing fan, your existing fan draws it in um, and just delivers it through your sewing tubes. And the only criteria is you've got to, you've got to have enough ground working, have, have, the, have the tube going in the ground deep enough so that the, uh, you can trap it in the ground with, when the press wheel comes over it. When he first told me about it, I was in Canberra and he rang me up and he was like, yeah, I'm going to put the exhaust into the ground. I was like, yeah, what's that going to do? Anyway, he explained to me, you know, it's going to halve the, or com eventually cancel out completely the, the input of fertiliser. The theory is that it helps uh, promote microbial activity, and it also, there is some anecdotal evidence that, that there's a certain amount of nitrogen um, benefit as well. Gary came up with the idea, this is Gary Lewis in Canada, came up with the idea that the Rain that comes out of a severe thunderstorm, or moisture, or water that comes out of a severe thunderstorm, is higher than higher in usable nitrogen. Initial thinking was the fact that it was um, uh, it was the electrical charge of the thunderstorm. Uh, Gary came up with a theory that it wasn't the electrical charge; it was actually a percussion that was changing the, the form of nitrogen and to a usable nitrogen. And so he decided that that percussion was could be mimicked in a, an internal combustion motor. Uh, and that's where that initial concept came from, that this is, is going to be good for, why not put it into the ground, it's got a little bit of nitrogen or, or you know, percentage of nitrogen with it. That's apart from all the microbial um, activity you get from the other trace elements and so on that are, that are with the exhaust gas. Robert puts a lot of time and, and research into these things, and more than what I used to do, and uh, therefore he's, he's had a fair bit of success with the different things. Well, we're showing wheat, barley and oats. We're concentrating on oats mainly because that's, that's our staple for feeding and finishing off lambs and so on. And, and so we're trying to grow them cheaply. I think it'll work well. Magnificent! When, when uh, super went up to $1,000 a, 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 a tonne or, ton or whatever you call it, um, it sounded real good. <laughs> well, from the drought and that, you know, we've had to adjust our stock quite a lot. I mean, we've gone from merinos to um, dorpers, which we wouldn't be here without them. <laughs> and um, yeah, we sort of, you know, got completely out of that sort of high input sheep to a less input. 
you know, we're adjusting our fencing all the time. We're just, you know, trying to fence the goats out <laughs> so they don't eat all the sheep's feed. Um, yeah, and things like the, the tractor and the things that we're doing with the zero till, you know, it's less, less time, less which is better for us and, you know, less inputs. We went through 10 years of dry, very dry seasons, we spent, you know, roughly fifty thousand dollars a year in, in trying to get crops in, um, in fertilizer and so on, and it, it's um, it all went up in smoke. So anybody's calculations is half a million dollars gone, and we had to prop up with, with other enterprises. So they're the they're the reasons why you, you sort of are always open to these ideas. Now, you know, I've got neighbours and brothers-in-laws that think that I'm an absolute crackpot, but um, you know, if, if it's it's all about, as I said earlier, the yields. If, if I can grow, if I can grow, you know, nine bags of oats with with this exhaust system, compared to 15 bags of oats with 50 kilos of DAP, I think I'm in front on the bottom line, and the gross margin will stack up, I think. Um, so, and particularly in this marginal country, because there's so many years that, that that you don't get any return at all on your fertilizer. So it's not that that drastic. All you're losing is seed and a bit of, bit of bit of fuel when you do it this way. For a $12,000 outlay and a, and, a, and a bit of labour, um, I think you know, we've recouped it already. But it's, I can't quantify that exactly in yields and so on, but we certainly, we grew a half reasonable crop of, like a six bag crop of oats this year, um, in a pretty marginal year, and it's, um, it, it only had exhaust gas under it. So I was pretty pleased with that. The way I feel about this place is just it's indescribable. Like it's my home. It's where I'm born and bred. You know, people have always asked me when I was away, and they, you know, where are you from? First thing come out of my head, Coba. <laughs> Every time, and you know, everyone go, oh, where's Coba? And you just explain it to them, and you know, everyone just go, oh, why do you want to live out there? And you just, it's my home. It's what, what I know. It's what I love. Um, yeah, sure, we could go and live somewhere else and buy land somewhere else, and it'd be ten times easier. <laughs> but where's the fun in that? <laughs>